I'm Mike Parry. I'm the um, uh, CEO of Display Block and Inbox Warriors. Um, and today I'll be talking to you about the opportunity cost of designing with crayons. Um, during the course of the presentation, um, we'll be looking at um, not necessarily the worst designed emails that we've seen, um, but we'll also be taking a look at some of the most uh, contradictory emails that, are, um, uh, that, that we've seen during the course of putting the presentation together. Um, to give you some, some feedback on DisplayBlock, DisplayBlock are a full service email agency and they're part of the Inbox Warriors group. Um, and we've been doing responsive design uh, email since uh, its inception, since the inception of the HTML5 canvas and the um, facilities that that provides us with uh, in, in order to design emails with a, a responsive element and to design for mobile. Um, our management team has over 50 years experience in the space. Um, Inbox Warriors itself has been running for eight years and, and Display Block is launched here at the show. Um, just to set the scene for you, um, there was a recent Adobe survey on um, why people use tablets and mobile devices um, and 60% of people's usage on tablets is for, you, for reading email. So 60% of people use email for reading tablets. But also a litmus survey in uh, January had 60% of everybody's opens were on mobile devices. Um, since January, in the space of six weeks, that's gone up by a further 1%. So it's actually now 61% of people are using mobile devices in order to um, read the emails that you're sending them. And another statistic from Litmus is that 80% of all emails that don't render correctly are actually deleted before people go back to uh, their desktop. So if they open your email on a mobile device and it's not rendering correctly for them on this device, then unfortunately, that's it. You've lost your user. They delete your email. They're not going back to look at the offers and the products and services that you're sending them, they're not going back to look at that on, um, uh, on a desktop later. So it works out at about 48% 40, of all of the people that open your emails you lose if you don't uh, build responsive mobile templates. So what should you be doing? Well, think mobile first. Okay, if 60% of your opens are on this device, then designing with a desktop in mind is just a complete faux pas. Doing a copy of your website and sending that as an email simply will not work. Um, you've got to design, design with this in, in mind first. So it's about taking the opportunity before you put anything, commit anything to um, a PDF or a PNG, it's about thinking about how will it render on this device and then designing with that in mind. It's too late to get to the code and start to code it up with that media tags and hope that that's going to render properly on a mobile device. You also need to think about user engagement. If you keep sending me emails that I can't read on my mobile phone, I just won't open them. As a direct result of that, your user engagement will go down and so will your email delivery. Uh, the ISPs today are measuring people's engagement with emails and making a decision on your reputation as a sender as a direct result of how many people get your emails to open them, how many people click on links within them, and how many people report you as spam or don't bother opening them at all. So user engagement is key, and if you don't develop uh, content that looks good on my device, I'm not going to open it. And then you've got to think about your brand identity. And this isn't about um, the, the complexities of your brand and how much effort and time you've put into developing the brand image in your offline media or on your web, pres web media. This is actually about if your brand looks bad on your phone, on my phone, on everybody in his phone, then you give us a bad branding experience. And as a result of giving me a bad branding experience, the brand identity is affected. Okay, now, did anyone travel here today on public transport? Pretty much all of us. 
Okay, did anyone manage to get a seat? One or two, opposite you, there was someone sat on public transport like this. Am I right? Looking at a phone, doing that. Well, a hundred, the, the statistics in a, a, a um, Times um, report for that people look at their mobile device 150 times a day. Your users are turning to their mobile device, even on the tube where they haven't got a signal and they can't see an, at, at the email properly, they're still trying to open it. Have you seen people sitting on the tube and they're like that and they're trying to read stuff on their mobile device and they still can't look at it because they've got no Wi-Fi. So people are looking, your customers are looking at this device and looking at your emails continually. If we go outside and look at the bus stop, there's someone looking at the phone. User engagement we've talked about, it improves the deliverability. Um, but we also have uh, the M-Commerce stats. Since 2009, the average spend on a mobile device has gone up 63%. It's gone from £122 per average purchase to £198 per average purchase. So your users are not only looking, but they're spending money in, uh, on their mobile devices, on their phones, on their iPads, on their tablets. Um, and if you're not designing with mobile in mind, if you're not designing to satiate that need, unfortunately what you're doing is you're wasting an opportunity. Okay, we looked at user engagement, we've looked at branding experience, but the real pain here is the, is the ROI. The bottom line is, if you're not getting people to click through on a mobile device, if you're not sending them email that works and renders properly on a mobile device, then you're losing money. It's costing you money on the bottom line. Okay, we've all looked at emails. I'm gonna skip this slide. We've, we've got a different presentation to give you after the show. We've all witnessed emails like this. If you see this email, this I received um, as I was putting this presentation together, and it was an email that was advertising um, responsive design. It was an email that said, as a subject line, new year, new white paper, download our responsive design for e-commerce. That was the subject line. You'll see that in the creative, that it's not designed for mobile dev devices. You'll see it's exactly the same on the mobile phone as it is on the desktop. Now, unfortunately, what's happened here is not that they haven't added at media tags, they actually haven't done that either, but the designer's not built it in a way that's gonna render properly across devices. What they've done is taken a big block, a single block, and built an email, and it effectively, they've gone 60% of users, we don't care what you see. The 60% of users are gonna to have to go like that in order to see this email properly. And then once they've opened the image so they can see it, they're gonna to have to do that to read it. So they use the engagement message. They lose the content and the calls to action. Okay, if we look at the statistics here, um, we see that the, the, the single biggest open, uh, open by device is on the Apple iPhone, and it's 26% of people open emails on the Apple iPhone, followed by the iPad and the Android, and it makes up a total of just over 60% of all of your opens. Um, and as I mentioned, if 80% of people e delete email that don't render properly, you're losing 48% of all of your opportunity. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to design emails with mobile in mind. Okay, so what's possible? How can you do it? What can you do in order to make it render better on my phone? Well, there are things like changing the hierarchy. I don't know, does anyone get the screw fix direct email? One person, brilliant. <laughs> I thought I'd pick a big brand. Um, Screwfix, if you've noticed over the last year or so, um, we did some consultancy work there, um, and Screwfix previously had exactly the same email rendering on their phone as on the, um, on the desktop. Now, what they looked at was the, guy, the, the builder on site reacts with their email differently to a guy at home or in the office, because the guy at home or in the office knows exactly where his local screw fixes. But when he's on site, he doesn't. So they change the hierarchy of their email so that when it comes on a mobile device, the biggest thing and the, the most prominent thing on the email is the um, branch finder, the branch locator button. 
because on site it's actually more important for him to know where his nearest screw fix is than whether they're giving 20% off on DeWalt drills. Okay, you can change the navigation on the email so that where you've got, it's easy on a desktop to go across and it's standard to go across in the row and navigate across an email. On a device, we need to stack that. We need to turn it on its side and so you change the navigation on, on a, a device, on an iPad, on a phone, and that enables the user to have an easier experience when they're actually using your phone. Um, fonts. Anyone, well, there's some people in here wearing glasses. Anyone need to wear glasses that are probably not wearing them today? And you get your messages, your text messages, and again, you're sort of turning your phone on the side to, to look at it. You get emails that come into your, your inbox and you can't read them. And again, you're scrolling out. You're doing the two finger scroll in order to read the content in the email. Unfortunately, what that does is it loses the call to action message because then you're scrolling across, then you've lost the whole of the design of the email. And so as a result of that, you close the email, you shut it up, you shut your phone off and the opportunity to sell to me is lost. So you can change the font size on your device. You can also change colors within the email. So, and, and I'll show you an example later of, of a white company email where, depending on the device, they wanted it to render it with different colors. But you change the colors in order to draw the, the user into the phone and into the smaller device. Um, again, you can add padding, which will down the side of the device. So I'm going to take a walk. But Added padding down the side of the email, which draws the eye into the area that the user wants, uh, that the designer wants you to look at, in order to engage with the email. So it takes some, it takes some white space, and it brings in the uh, the user's eye in order to get them to take the action that they're looking to do. And um, we can change the way an email is laid out, and we can also scale and should scale images. Um, if we look at uh, screen resolutions. And there's still people building emails with 750 pixels, uh, 750 pixels wide. Despite the fact that um, uh, industry standard for a very long time has been 600 pixels wide, you still see them and then you get the email on your phone and you're having to scroll across before you, you even start to read. Um, using mobile design, you can set at, at media queries for an iPhone, which is actually now 640 pixels wide. Um, but uh, when we, we're doing at media designs for these, or at media queries for these, we're looking at, at being at 320 pixels. And um, you set your at media queries to 640, 200 at the bottom, and then three or four areas in between, and let the de device decide what's the the exact the right size for the image to render at. I, m I mentioned earlier that the design starts when the designer or, or email starts when the designer is looking at how they're going to put the email together. It doesn't start when the design is finished and it gives it to a coder in order to code up for uh, the HTML for a, for a uh, mobile re and responsive email. So you need to think, or the designers, your design team needs to think in building blocks. They need to think Lego. In order to build responsive templates, it needs to, everything needs to be in blocks that you can turn from uh, rows into columns. And you also need to think about the unnecessary content that you're including within email. So where, as you might be trying to satiate a information hungry user uh, on a desktop, a lot of that copy and content are not going to be read by scanners. People who use mobile phones for reading emails tend to scan more than read. And despite the fact that we've all done that and you, you know, even a two year old now knows on a phone to do that, to move things up and down, and um, despite the fact that we've done that, if you put too much content into a mobile content email, you'll lose the audience. You won't, they won't read it all, and you won't get them to take the action that, that you're looking for them to take. And you need to, 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 to include action-orientated copy, because it's the action-orientated copy. If you're sending me an email, and you don't want me to interact with you on it, then you're spamming me. There is no point sending me an email that you don't want me to do something. So if I'm opening it on a mobile device and you need to have action-oriented copy in order to get me to do the things that you want, to do, want me to do. If it's just words, I'm not going to interact with you. 
Okay, we'll have, we're looking over here again, we've got, um, uh, well, we've got the road, we're really looking just stacking the content from blue, black road, from the mobile device, we can stack it either in one row, or you can, see, you can move the content around so that we've got the blue and the, the black at the top together as in one row and a separate, almost separate column for the grey. So we have the flexibility in mobile devices, in responsive design, to lay email out in a better way for a single desktop layout. Um, in order to determine which block comes first, we have to stack from left to right, and we always stack from left to right. It never changes on on uh, mobile responsive email. Um, also, try not to put copy over image blocks. You see a lot of designs, email designs on uh, desktop where you've got your offer copy straight over the top of an image. When you do that in a responsive design, what happens is that the image tends to shrink, the copy tends to shrink, we can't see it. In order to, to see that copy, you're again scrolling out. Once you start to scroll out to see that copy, you're losing your audience, you're losing the opportunity to get me to interact with your email. Um, you'll see here that we've also got the three, and it's not three columns, it's three rows, uh, two rows and, and three columns becoming one row in this email. Okay, you can also enable you to hide blocks of content. You'll see in this um, example where the two black uh, image, cop image blocks are removed because they're irrelevant to the mobile version and so on a desktop you've got four images and one block of copy and in the mobile version you've just got two images and one block of copy. Um, when you get more complex in terms of your, um, your, uh, your blocks you'll tend to find that unfortunately you can't just stack that content so you've got to make some and um, some design, there needs to be some work done on your design. And in order to get this to all stack properly, the gray copy and the blue copy need to align. So you need to make the blue image on the um, HTML on the desktop version slightly smaller to bring the, the uh, gray copy into line with the blue. And that then enables you to stack first the blue image, then the gray copy, gray image, blue copy. Um, so you just need to work on your design and there is some, some uh, compromising that you need to do as a direct result of building for mobile, but the, 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 the um, negative of not doing it or the, the downside of not doing the, the design compromise is actually you lose your audience completely because you're not showing um, a, 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 an email that renders properly on my device. And that, this is how it manifests itself. So I, I mentioned the white company. The first example um, you see here, this is the same email. This is the same email just built with responsive design in mind. So you'll see that um, the original image is the desktop image um, and you've got a row across the top. You've got three columns, two red blocks. You've got a red block underneath. Um, there's plenty going on in the desktop copy. They then have got a version for Android which they wanted to keep in some colour and they were basically measuring, I've got five minutes left, the lady at the end is telling me. Um, you've then got the, the Android copy which keeps some of the colour elements in but for their, what they consider to be their more sophisticated users which are the um, iPhone users, they wanted to go back to their more traditional black and white branding colours and so the at media queries that are built within into the code enable the device to render the version of the email that the white company want their users to see. And the results are um, that we have the improved user engagement. But if user engagement is the, the prince of email deliverability, because with better user engagement, you clearly get better delivery, you get better delivery, you have higher open clicks and ROI. Well, the king of, it, of, of, um, of all of this, there's no point doing it unless your ROI is greater. And unless your return on investment improves uh, as a direct result of doing this, 
your management team uh, at some point are going to pull the plug because there is an investment in time and money required to do responsive templates. So if we have a look at um, an example of some of the results that uh, we've seen with one client and the client that did this, this is an example where they split their data between um, sending responsive emails and non-responsive, their traditional HTML copy. They, uh, this is over the course of 12 email campaigns, 9 million emails sent. You see the top, uh, the top set of results, this, the, the email, the standard HTML, HTML email had a 96.9% .9 delivery rate, whereas the responsive copy, because it had improved user engagement, as soon as people got it, they started to engage with it, had a 99.8% response rate, uh, delivery rate. Because people are engaging with it as a direct result of the email um, being more responsive, their delivery rates were higher. And that's not a huge difference in delivery rates, but if you're talking about 9 million emails, it turns out that that 2% is somewhere in the region of 180,000 emails, 18,000. Um, the real, the real figures to look at here though are the, the open rates. The open rates went up from 23% to 25.7%. So people are more engaged with the email, so they're opening it more. And that doesn't sound like a lot of increase, but actually 2.7% of 23% is 10% extra increase. 10% more people opening the email. And if we look at the clicks, which is, real, is the real measure, it's 0.4% more clicks which is again a 10% increase in the number of people that visited the site as a direct result of receiving a mobile um, responsive template. Now, 10% on their bottom line um, in terms of ROI and revenue is a huge number. Um, so for this company, it made sense that now all of their emails are built with responsive email templates in mind. What you seriously don't want to do, I mentioned the, the email at the start of the, the presentation, but um, this is another email while I was putting the, the, the um, uh, presentation together that I received. And this presentation was selling seminar places for responsive campaigns. And this subject line was do semicolon responsive content. And what I got in the email was someone who hadn't bothered to think design, responsive design, hadn't bothered to code with that media queries. They just did their same old template, the same old copy, couple of adverts down the side, and they sent it out trying to sell responsive template, uh, responsive campaign seminar places. Seriously, don't do this. The opportunity cost of designing with crayons like this could be your job as a marketer. Thank you for your time.